All right, this morning, let's look at what happens when you are in a situation when your transaction log is growing. This happens from time to time. And I would like to say that the only times that I've run into this is when generally a, a junior DBA sets up a database and they do it wrong. And while that is certainly uh, something that does occur from time to time, I've actually caught senior DBAs and senior database architects setting up uh, databases and recovery models wrong. So the first thing to understand is that when you uh, when you first set up a database, you need to understand whether you are setting up an OLTP database or you are setting up a OLAP database. And then it's very important to understand that or even a mixed model database because that is going to determine fundamentally whether you're going to set up a full recovery model or a simple recovery model. Generally, OLAP databases are going to be simple recovery models. The reason for that, let me explain, is that generally with an OLAP environment, you have a load time because the bulk of what a an OLAP database is going to be for is for reporting. So you're going to have a load time, and once that load time is done, um, then you're going to be running these reporting queries, which are reading queries. They're not inserts, they're not updates, they're not deletes. So when do you think a backup of a database is generally going to occur with an OLAP model? Well, it's generally going to occur after the load time, right? Most of the times that I've done uh, or I manage OLAP environments, and if you're a client of mine and you want to manage an OLAP environment, I will generally do a backup after the load. That's when I do the backup. So there's no point of having a uh, regular transaction log backup because what you're going to be doing after that is you're going to be reading from the database, okay? Uh, an OLTP database is very different. You are going to have transactions generally running throughout the day or throughout a period of time. A great example would be like the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. You're going to be constantly grabbing transactions into a database. So you want that to be a full recovery model. And the reason is because fundamentally the, the purpose of backing up the transaction log or frequent transaction log backups is uh, for recovery purposes, right? So that you minimize the amount of data loss, okay? So without understanding the architecture for the database, you're more than likely gonna see a problem eventually involving a growing transaction log, right? Uh, because if it's no LTP database, uh, then you need to have regular transaction log backups. If it's no lab database, then you don't, right? So um, several of the problems that I've seen involving a growing transaction log was an OLAP database uh, did not uh, was set to full recovery. It should have been simple recovery. And so there was no transaction log backups occurring. But what do you think that meant? Well, the, the transaction log file just kept growing and growing and growing. Another example of one that I've seen, which was more recent, they woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning because, uh, and this was a senior database architect, set it all up. Um, did not make sure that transaction log backups were going through, very clearly was not monitoring that, which by the way is very important. If it's a full recovery database, you need to be monitoring the last time you got a transaction log backup. And it needs you need to at least have one, at least one in the last day. I think really you should be having a transaction log backup at least every 10 minutes or five minutes, because again, you're trying to minimize data loss. But I mean, in the last 24 hours, you should have at least had one. Um, so all, and of course, uh, I should finish the story, but basically there was, there was none. So what happened? Well, the, the transaction log blew up and then the disk was out of space and we ended up in a situation where it was so far out of space, we couldn't add space to it. And so the database had to, to go offline for a brief period of time, switched recovery models back to the transaction log. Well, that took a long time. Um, it was very inconvenient, but again, it was, I'd like to say, I only have seen junior DBAs make this mistake, but I'm like, no, I've seen senior DBAs and senior database architects set up the wrong recovery model. Okay, number two, all full recovery database models must have regular transaction log backups. Otherwise, they will grow. There is no other alternative, okay? A transaction log uh, backup assists with minimizing data loss. Like I said, I've seen this with, with people who are seniors, so it's it's not like... Um, only juniors make this mistake. Number three, I am a firm believer in pre-growing transaction logs, especially in simple recovery models, okay? You will find a lot of DBAs debate this. Oh, well, the reason why we don't want to do that is because blah, 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 blah. Basically, usually they, they like to engage in busy work. You'll find this out with them. They're also the kind of people who love to have pointless meetings for five hours at a time. Um, I'm not going to sit there and fool around with a simple recovery model. I'm going to set it to a pre uh, preset size, usually about like 10 gig, for instance, in some 
some environments 100 gig but the bottom line is it, it's going to force developers to think in batches and there's a reason why I do that okay because you will run out of space if a developer decides to do a billion record insert and he or she doesn't need to be doing that in the first place that person needs to do the insert in a batch okay and so instead of a billion records you need to be doing it in records in like let's say 10,000 at a time or whatnot it's incredibly stupid to allow developers to be able to do an insert as much as they want at a time and so um, by and, and they'll get it back in their error logs when uh, when an insert fails or crashes they'll see oh that didn't work out very well and then they'll come and they'll contact me and I'll be like well I mean how many records are you inserting oh well I'm inserting a billion records okay well you shouldn't be doing that you need to be doing it in batches period and it's it's better for SQL Server it's better for the environment and it's also better for uh, their application okay now if you don't do this you're gonna face a growing uh, transaction log sometimes when they decide to run a massive transaction right and so then you're going to have to have a drive that can always handle whatever they decide to do by putting um, limits around developers then they can develop around those limits but if you don't well then you're gonna get the uh, what is it the active transaction the transaction log is full that error and then of course in four always on uh, there are some nuances I've seen where a secondary is still applying transactions and it can grow uh, in those cases as well and that depends on your familiarity of course with uh, with always on but probably the the biggest one if you really want to know what causes a transaction log to grow is that it is the wrong recovery model and like I said and this is very important I'd like to say that it's only something that a junior DBA will make a mistake but it is not a junior DBA that generally um, that I've seen make this mistake a lot of times it's a senior or a senior database uh, architect or data DBA that makes this mistake and the fact is, is that it's it's something that from the beginning it needs to be set up in the right recovery model. And if you set anything up in full recovery, one of your monitoring jobs should always be, did you get a transaction log backup in the last X amount of time? I really think that should be monitored every hour because I think you should have multiple, but at the bare minimum, you should be monitoring that for the last 24 hours.